journey through the veil of darkness, the paranormal, spiritual, and comedic abound. Welcome to the Richard Spazoff Show. The Richard Spassoff Show is brought to you by Audible, and you can find us on our website at thepsychicmediumspassoffshow.com. Also, the Richard Spassoff Podcast is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts, available for Android and coming soon iDevices. You can check out the hcuniversalwebsite.com. I also like to give a big thank you to TalkStream Live for bringing us aboard their website. Thank you, Tom and Bill. Also, another thank you to our engineer at Mainstream Radio. You could hear our website, well, you can hear our broadcast now. Thanks to them. All the links, everything you need to know is on the PsychicMediumSpassOffShow.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk Entertainment. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Oh, boy, Uh it's kind of like going to the dentist when you're not sure what he's going to do. Anyways, I think I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to introduce you to our guest here on the Richard Spassoff Show. Here he is, Colonel Arnold Strong. Hey, good afternoon, Richard. It's nice to be on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We've been a while, and we've been working on this, and I'm so happy to have you here today. Yeah, well, I'm delighted to be a guest on your show. It's uh, especially after your intro. I'm very intrigued because whether or not it uh, it directly touches to blockchain, it certainly touches to a lot of my interests. So, uh. <laughs> well, let's begin. You have so many stories to share with 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 us, but uh, let's start off with the most important one right now, which is your love of your life. Tell me <laughs> how you guys met. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. that's you might as well uh reconnect uh or, or start the show off right right exactly yes. yeah i i'm that i i'm that uh i'm that luckiest guy in the world that uh um uh was entering the last two years of my service i'm a retired army colonel um i graduated high school here in los angeles in, in 1985 um, where I, in my senior year, uh, met a gal that I was absolutely crazy about. She was a friend of my girlfriend's and, uh, you know, I used to drive the two of them to school mm-hmm. and, uh, and, um, we sort of, you know, got closer than you're supposed to get in high school and we <laughs> got very much in trouble for, uh, both of us got very much in trouble, Catholic high schools and, uh, religious parents. And forbidden to ever see each other again. And I, um, I went away. I, uh, I joined the service. I uh, had a uh, uh, extended military career, and uh, and and literally sort of lost touch with uh, Jessica. And uh, I was married. I had a couple of children. Uh, my two boys. My youngest uh, lives with me now here in Southern California. And uh, when I came back to Southern California, I was a full bird colonel and. Uh, I'm really pretty depressed, honestly. I mean, I mm-hmm. was I had just gone through a divorce. I had uh, I had um, you know I, I had uh, been to Afghanistan three times and uh, Iraq, which is extraordinary that it was 16 years ago today that we launched the invasion of Iraq, and uh, it was 14 years ago that I came back from Iraq yesterday. And um, 
and I was just sort of down, you know, and, and feeling pretty low. And uh, God bless, you know, I raise a glass to uh, uh, the uh, founders of uh, uh, Facebook frequently because uh, God bless Mark Zuckerberg for uh, for making that social medium because uh, I posted a sunset picture of uh, where I was. I was living in a in a in a on a friend's boat, in Marina del Rey, right. And just sort of thanked God and thanked the universe for this awesome beauty in my life. And uh, and 31 years to the month since I'd last seen her, uh, Jessica Jorgensen, who is uh, now my fiance, um, saw that picture on Facebook and said, "Oh my gosh, Arnold Strong, are you in Marina del Rey? I'm in West. <laughs> um, do you want to go to brunch?" And I said, "Yes, I do." You know yeah. what? You never would have guessed. I don't think you were even thinking that you guys would have even, even seen each other again, right? Oh no, I, I I had no hope. I mean, I I mean, I used to. I you know, I, I will admit, three decades later, that you know, I I kept my sister's uh, little pocket wallet photo of her in my wallet for years. You know, when I was an undergrad, and and mm-hmm. I just. You know, and then I just sort of never thought I'd I'd see her again. And then God bless the magic that inspired her to reach out because, literally, uh, I will keep it clean for your radio show. But the first thing I uh, I said to myself when she walked onto the deck of Killer Cafe is, "Oh my God, do not screw this up." <laughs> and uh, yeah, and yeah, I mean, you've you've we've connected on social media. You've seen. I mean, yes. she's the beauty and an absolute you know queen, and really. She's a she's a she's a real healer, you know, which is, appears uh, appeals certainly to a lot of your, you know, audience. I mean, she's very much uh, not just head, heart, mind, body, spirit aligned with me, but she's you know she's very much an empath. She's uh, in the healing arts. She's a 22 year massage therapist who studied under the masters in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and so she's an incredibly gifted healer who you know, took one look at me and realized I was a mess. And then, <laughs> we all are though. Who isn't? <laughs> yeah. So, so thanks for letting me share that. That's uh that's been really beautiful. I, I proposed to her at the United Nations uh, um, in June of last year and we're getting married in June of this year. So it's uh it's really a delight to uh, have that. Cause I, I think from, you know, having love in your life enables mm-hmm. and all are good to happen in your life. And that's certainly what, has been the case for me in the last couple of years. I've had a lot of opportunity, a lot of growth, a lot of healing. I'm, you know, I'm 30, 35 pounds lighter than I was when I met her. I, I, I'm, I'm off the, you know, uh, medication that I was on. Um, it was needed, you know, I was definitely right. off when I came back and, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm a lot clearer headed, a lot more focused, a lot more happy, you know, good. That's what counts in life. That and, and, and the love the, the, the people that we love, the people that we care about. Yeah. And uh, but but to start off with, I mean there's so many things I like to ask ask you, but what is the what was the evasion of Iraq like? What was the experience like? How did it all start? What Well so I was part of what they call OIF or Operation Iraqi Freedom Two. Um, which, uh, I had, I had, I'd been a regular army officer for a decade between 90 and 2000. And in the drawdown of the nineties, I, um, I w- had been passed over for major and I thought, man, are you guys kidding? The economy was booming. And I got out in 2000 and, and had worked in a sort of dot com era, mm-hmm. uh, public relations and technology, uh, uh, platforms. I was working in Portland, Oregon at the time. And, uh, and I'll never forget when, you know, uh, the morning of September 11th, 2001, I was getting ready to go to uh, work in a, in a suburb of uh, Portland, uh, Beaverton, and a friend called me and said, oh my God, turn on the news. And I didn't have a television at the time. I, I ran over to my neighbor's house and, and turned on her television um, and immediately saw the second bird hit the uh, World Trade Center. And, and really, you know, as all of us did, we just were sort of like... What does this mean? Yeah. yeah so that was yeah. sort of a, an inspiration for me to return to service. I was wondering what the hell am I doing out of uniform? And so I I returned to service as the as the spokesman or public affairs officer for the Oregon National Guard. That is what I had done for the regular army for the last three years of my uh, uh, military service in the regular army with some distinction. I had won a bunch of awards for, uh, for newspaper editing, for video uh, production and photography and sort of being that guy that stands on the mm-hmm. 
podium in front of the camera with you know, <laughs> what the general meant to say was. Um, and, uh, and so I, uh, I, I returned to service as the spokesman for the Oregon National Guard um, in 2002, immediately went to Afghanistan um, in spring of 2003, and then was uh, joined uh, an infantry battalion uh, that was there working for First Cavalry Division in 0405. So, um, a, a circuitous route to answer your question. Okay. It was it was surreal, you know, because mm-hmm. you know, I mean, Baghdad is Baghdad. You know, it's it's one. It is you know one of the great cities of uh, of civilization, and um, you know, and I, um, you know, to this day, I uh, when I got there, it was a. Uh, it was a mess, you know, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was a place where you were very paranoid. People were getting shot regularly. People were getting blown up regularly. And it was, uh, it was, uh, it was just a, a really chaotic place. And that's not to, you know, deride the people therein. I think that most people in wartime are victims of, uh, you know, of their government. I think that right. most people are sort of the innocent standbyers. Uh, innocent uh, bystanders, rather, and um, and so I saw a lot of. Uh, I, I, I remember. I mean, one thing that I, uh, I that I is a nice memory uh, out of that is. Uh, going to ask. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a positive memory out of that, and that was um, I had a national public radio uh, reporter with me, um, traveling with me at the time, and uh, we went on this mission where. Uh, our intelligence sources had uh, revealed that these uh, uh, these uh, local terrorists in a suburb of Baghdad um, were planning to uh, to blow up a soccer field right after it opened. Um, you know, I mean, lest we forget, Iraq was a not necessarily partner nation, mm-hmm. but we we had a relationship with Iraq uh, in in sort of stemming. Uh, Iran and holding Iran at bay for years. I mean, there's that infamous picture of Don Rumsfeld, you know, shaking the hand of uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, right, back right. In the 80s. And um, uh, so there was a lot of American ordnance stored in Iraq. And what these uh, guys, these bad malign actors' intention was, was to use American ordnance from the 80s that was left over in, uh, in ammunition depots and uh, use that as improvised explosive devices, opening day of a soccer field, these kids come out with their families to go play soccer, blow it all up, and then mm-hmm. hold up the, uh, you know, the tails of these artillery pieces and everything and say, oh my gosh, look what the Americans are doing to us, they're killing our children. So obviously we needed to stop that right. and not let them have the you know, psychological warfare mm-hmm. win, nor you know, obviously you know, uh, you know, end the lives of innocent uh, children and all that. So. So we're going, you know, around and we're literally we linked up with this, uh, with this explosive ordnance disposal or EOD guy who literally, I mean, there's that, you know, you know, sort. It was just sort of a joke, like you know, you're tiptoeing across a soccer field with your ears and with your fingers in your ears. Yeah, like, yeah. And uh, and and I was. We had these, you know, sort of. Uh, we had, you know, hearts and minds campaign. This is 2004. We had soccer balls that had the uh, nation of Iraq emblazoned on one side of it with, uh, in Arabic, uh, saying, Iraq is free, remember to vote. We're coming up on the first election of Iraq, the first free election in some time. And, um, uh, and so we saw these kids playing in this, uh, in the, the sort of the front yard close to the soccer field. And I came out and I said, hey, look, grab me one of those soccer balls. And uh, you know, I was a major at the time and I, I got down and I did what you're not supposed to do. You know, I removed my you know protective eyewear, right, right. my gloves and my helmet and interacted with this little like, you know, six year old girl oh. and, uh, <laughs> and gave her a soccer ball and her brother immediately like stole it from her and raised his hand like he was going to hit her. And of course she ran away and I just grabbed the kid and, you know, I'm, I'm a, trained as a basic Arab linguist and I, in Arabic, I just, you know, uh, said, no, this is for her. And, uh, and, held the kid until I took the soccer ball back and, and just, you know, just sort of grabbed his shirt right, and gave her the soccer ball back. And mom loved that. Um, because you know, you get a, you know, a good person standing up for your daughter. And, uh, she, uh, 
motion to her chest like she was pointing to her Aww. and then pointed to her eyes mm -hmm. like I see and then like made this explosion look with her hands boom and she pointed to where the bomb was oh no okay and okay. so it was literally just you know about 10 meters in front of her house and so uh I basically asked her, the bomb's here, you know, in Iraqi uh, Arabic, and she said, yeah, and then brought her kids inside the fence, and I brought the guys over, and we destroyed it, and of course, oh, yeah. it was amazing, save that we did an implode, you know, it basically imploded, it brought it down into the earth rather than externally, and uh, a controlled demolition, and uh, and that was great, it was a big victory, we saved mm -hmm. a bunch of Of course, mom was pissed because... Uh, we broke a couple of her windows in the <laughs> oh, her yeah. for that, but uh, <laughs> we saved a bunch of kids' lives and uh, and then played soccer with a bunch of kids, and that's kind of a fun. Uh, it was kind of a good sort of story of that. But then I, uh, you know, I I, I I served there, and I, uh, I then I was in Afghanistan again for a full tour in 06, 07, where I was both a task force spokesman and then operations officer training the Afghan National Army and. Uh, yeah, I, I was very proud of my service. I had a, had a and, I, and, I, and I had a blessed service. You know, I, I tell everyone, even though I'm, a, I'm an army ranger infantry guy, I never had to kill anybody, and I never got shot myself. And so I count my blessings every day. You know? uh, great. I mean, I thank you though for help helping us and for being there and for saving those kids. Yeah, you know, I just think that, you know, I mean, everyone's got service in their heart. I mean, I I appreciate the thank you for your service thank notes. You. I think that everybody. I think that everybody's got, you know, uh, a good in their heart and soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coasties, we, we all, we're just called to do something different. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean different people. We're just, you know, the same people you grew up with. We just happen to be wearing a uniform and have taken an oath. And so it's our job to act. Well, my quite question is, do the people in the higher ups, do they really understand the pain that the serv servicemen have to go through do they re really understand the behind the scenes or well, i think so yeah okay. i think we're really blessed i think that well i i think that i would say uniformed service leadership absolutely you yeah know, yeah you, you don't you don't get to become you know uh, a colonel or, uh, or in the navy an admiral or, or a, a captain rather or an admiral or general or without, you know, sacrifice and without leading the way by example. And so I think that, you know, the general officers that I served with, the senior officers I served with, the senior non-commissioned officers, I mean, they're, they're all people that, you know, they're, they're that basic philosophy, be, no do, you know, be the person, know your job and mm -hmm. do, lead by example. And, uh, and I think that sometimes political leadership doesn't quite understand it. You that's know, what I, I mean. That, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think sometimes that's a big, uh, there's a big question mark there because, and, and I mean this regardless of political orientation. Right, whether, right, respect, uh, respectfully, yes. yes yeah, yes. I think that respectfully, you know, a lot of people don't understand, uh, you know, the sacrifice it takes to serve. You know, sometimes yes. you're, you're away from family so often and... You know, my, my son, I'm really blessed. My youngest son lives with me now. He's a college student here in, in, in Long Beach. And, uh, and you know, when he'd been here for three months, he said, yeah, Pop, this is great. I mean, I don't think I've had three months with you since I was about five. Oh. <laughs> and, and I was just sort of, I took the breath out of my, you know, I was like, what? He says, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that to hurt your feelings. I'm just saying that you've always been deployed. You've always been going away. And I haven't mm -hmm. had months with you like ever and and that is an example not of my life but of like anybody in the service's life over the last you know what we call the forever war period where you know for for you know 18 years now we've been in a state of perpetual war and it's uh, the it's the longest war of our nation's history you know it was right after september 11th coming up on uh 18 years because it was you know september 11th you know 2001 and so we are in 2019, and how that's real, I have no idea, you know. I mean, that's been yeah. almost two decades, you know. I mean, when you were there in Iraq, when you were there in Iraq in 2007, what was that like, about the same, or? 
Yes, so I, I so I was in Iraq in 0405. I was in Afghanistan in 03, where it was it was a very immature theater. It was it was literally uh, it was sort of surreal because there wasn't a lot of the infrastructure that we all take for granted, like street lights and power. Right. And you know, you showed up and you were in blackest night with nothing but starlight to light your way, and it was extraordinary. You know, you come into Kabul. And you're already, you know, a mile above sea level. And so when you land, you're like, you know, wow, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, and, and then uh, and then from there you get into the mountain ranges and, it, you know, you're, you're going nothing but up. But so it's it's a it's a beautiful place, but it's also very much um, from another time. You know, you're you're in a very, um, you know, I don't think Afghanistan was tremendously different a hundred years ago, you know, um, you know, there's an awful lot of, uh, uh, you know, the stoicism of that people, regardless of tribe or ethnicity, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very different. And so, well, I saw the maturization of the theater, if you will, mm -hmm. between, um, uh, Oh three, Oh six, Oh seven. And then, uh, the last time I was there is 2010, and, uh, and, you know, I'm sure that I wouldn't recognize it now with a lot of permanent bases and all that, but it was, I, you know, I, I was very thankful for the opportunity. I'm one of those, you know, odd ones that, you know, sort of joined the army to see the world. And I've, I've been blessed, <laughs> to, you know, travel to 47 countries and speak several languages and, uh, have interacted with people of every, you know, ethnicity, every tribe, color, class, creed. You could imagine, and um, I'm very, you know, I'm very thankful for it. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Southern California surfer kid, you know, who yeah. grew up in in LA, and and uh, and 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 you know, I've been able to interact with people, um, and realize that people are what it's all about. You know, I mean, regardless of what your background is. Exactly, and from where you came from, I bet you had no idea where you were going to be, in that sense, right? Yeah, in both profession and also in, you know, uh, I mean, I had, I had no, uh, I, you know, I mean, this will sound corny, but I sort of thought okay. I was going to be unhappy. You know, mm -hmm. I just thought I was going to be unhappy. I had no idea that I'd be so blessed as to come back and, you know, reconnect with my childhood love and, you know, and have like, you know, an awful lot of healing and light and love and, yeah. and prosperity in my life, so. Well, it seems that you have given a lot of help for people out there as well to help them heal when you were at war. Not only did you take something negative and change it into a po positive, but y you were there for people of many, many, many types of people. You were yeah. there for them. Yeah, you know, I uh, you know last month was Valentine's Day, and I always think of. Uh, I was thinking that, you know, when I was in Iraq in 05, I had a pretty contentious um, uh, uh, conversation at home uh, remotely, and I was feeling really down for me, you know, and really feeling pretty alone. And I realized, this is BS, you know. I mean, you can't, like, feel sorry for yourself. You're an officer. You're a feel-great <laughs> officer. I start acting, you know, who you are. And I realized that my boss <laughs> back in Oregon had told me uh, – Hey, look, you got this camera, you got this video camera, you got that sat phone. It is super expensive, but I want to tell you that, you know, the, you know, the government's already paid for it and they've already prepaid it. So like, just use it. Make sure. <laughs> <I> love, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I just realized it's Valentine's day. We're on the, uh, the, uh, Euphrates river. Um, and so I just fired myself up with a mug of coffee and I went, Fighting position to fighting position, you know, tower to uh, to truck to everything. Everybody was on guard duty. I just like, hey Johnson, what's up? They're like Major Strong, what the hell are you doing awake? It's like, <laughs> it, like it's it's Valentine's Day. Have you got a girlfriend or a wife? Or I was like, uh, yeah, I got a girlfriend. I'm like, what's your number? And I'd like call the international code and everything, and I'd say, you got two minutes. And I, just, <laughs> I went and I just like gave everybody, whether it was their mom or their sister, Aww. girlfriend or wife, you know, or or you know whoever a call home and you know it's just like you said i mean like you want to be that person that alleviates suffering whether mm -hmm. it's own people or it's in the uh p 
people that are um, that are you know there in wartime. Yeah, and you did that. You were there, and, and I bet you uh, you felt the Holy Spirit very much. I bet you felt God around you. I, I think that's a very fair thing to say, and I think you're absolutely correct. That's a very good way to do it. I mean, and and from the Latin definition of spirit, which is into you know breathe life into you know mm-hmm. to to really sort of breathe fresh air into and really be inspired or inspiratu, you know, uh, mm-hmm. that brought into me. I, I uh, you know, I very much, I'm a, I'm not a deeply religious person. I'm a, right, I, right. I am, I am, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm also a pretty, pretty deeply spiritual person. And I think that spirit was definitely a part of that. I, I know that that's what, you know, I, I, I sort of euphemistically say that like, you know, with Jessica and I, you know, God sort of looked down and said, <laughs> Man, you're unhappy, and man, you're unhappy, and you two should get together and be like not unhappy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, life and the way that I look at God, if if it's okay, can I tell 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 you? Please, yeah. It's just my best friend. Simple, and it's like I've experienced so many things in my life where. I used to be called in Vegas and at La Costa Resort in Carlsbad to dance with the mafia's wives. I was kind of like a big babysitter. (laughs) I never guessed that I would be doing that. I didn't really know who these men were until I went to their house and dropped their wives off. You know, oh, no. (laughs) Right, 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 exactly. uh, Yeah. Yeah, my my uh, my my uh, father's uh, family, my his uh, brother, God bless his soul, my uncle Bill. Um, uh, he married a, a into. Uh, they were Irish Catholics, and he married into an Italian Catholic family there in eastern Pennsylvania. And I'll never forget going to visit the uh, the family on the lake, uh, Lake Juan Popac, one time. And I remember, <laughs> you know, the uncles and the uncles and the uncles. And uh, and everybody at, uh, and uh, the uh, the head of the family who was always chawing a big cigar and looked some like something out of a movie. You know, he's always in a suit, always had a fedora, always had a tie, always had a <laughs> you know a tie clip. He 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 patted me on the do- on the head like a dog and said, "Yeah, a little strong. How you doing? Hey, why don't you go take some time in the kitchen with your aunties? Okay, just stay in there for a little bit." And I looked I looked through the slot and thought. Man, they must be businessmen. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's yeah. It's the I come from an Italian background, so I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> there's family, and then there's the family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody told me about the family until I got a little older. Then I found out. So, so but uh, no, you 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 have some wonderful stories. I mean, you have a lot of heart within you, and that's. I'm I'm happy that you're here today. Do we have a little bit more time for one more story? Yeah, sure, of course. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I, I tell, I, I joked at my retirement ceremony that my, uh, my fourth grade teacher knew that I was going to be an Army Public Affairs officer when she told my mom, "Good kid, pretty smart. If only he'd stop talking." You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with that said, uh, let me uh, just say goodbye to everybody in our audience. I'm happy to have you here today. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This Sunday, we'll be back with Colonel Arnold Strong speaking about the topic of the Krepno currency. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Richard Spazoff Show. For more episodes and information, join us online at PsychicMediumSpazoffShow.com or catch the show on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast service. The Richard Spazoff Show is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. For more great content and shows, visit HCUniversalNetwork.com or download our free HC Universal Network podcast app from your favorite device market. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And until next time, 
Keep watch on the darkness.